Hi everyone, welcome back to the Philosophy Podcast. Um, I haven't done a podcast for a while, uh, if you're a subscriber you'll have noticed, hopefully. Um, and basically it's because I haven't really had any ideas of what to what to do a video about. Um, and um, recently uh, um, uh, somebody called Acacia Stewart um, asked me a question on on the YouTube channel in response to uh, the video, the second video about evolution and creation myths, where I talk about the holes in the scientific story that explains how human beings are here and how the world is here and how the universe exists as it, as it does. Um, and that the whole story of Big Bang, evolution, human beings, you know, is way too simple. And uh, to, to the extent that it's misleadingly simple. So, um, and Acacia asked me, um, could I put forward the, rash, uh, the rational um, viewpoint of creationism? And um, I think by that, she, she mentioned, or he mentioned there, that they are a um, Christian. So I presume they mean the sort of pretty traditional Christian um, story about um, God creating the world in seven days and, and that kind of thing. Um, and to be honest, I, I'm not sure if I could do justice to to that. I think there are other people who um, can put forward the case for those ideas a lot better than me. But um, I will do my best and um, but what I will what, what I will talk about is my own view of how uh, how perhaps things have come about, how this universe has come about and how this planet's come about and how human beings have come about. And um, I tend to believe that there is an intelligence behind all of that, uh, i.e. God. Now, when I talk about, when I use the word God, I don't mean to imply that the Christian God or the Jewish God or the Islamic Allah or the Hindu Shiva. Um, in philosophy, we try to keep things as simple as possible. And those different religions have very complex concepts about God. And um, whereas in philosophy we want to try and keep the concept of God fairly, fairly well defined, and so the the concept that I'm using normally when I talk about God is this intelligence behind the creation of the universe. So there's some kind of intelligence, there's some kind of being that um, may have influenced or indeed totally controlled the uh, the the uh, creation of this universe and human beings in it and other animals etc um, everything so I'm literally just focusing on that aspect of God um, God's role in, in our understanding in this, in this video so, so um, yeah, I tend to think that that consciousness God probably did um, choose to create the universe the way we see it. And that is interesting because if that's true, and we can use what's called a working assumption, so I'm not actually saying that I know it's true, but I'm just going to, if it was true, if we assume that that's true, just for the purposes of thinking through a bit more about the issues, so if we assume that, that there was some kind of 
the intelligence behind the creation of the universe, God, then it's quite interesting in that it's, God seems to have created the universe in a way that leaves it open for us to, to believe that there was some intelligence behind it or that in fact the scientific explanation is adequate. And so I would say that in fact <laughs> that, that is the case, that you could go either way. I think, um, and um, perhaps God did that um, because it gives us the free the freedom to be able to believe that this universe has come about without God um, and without some being, some intelligence behind it. And a lot of mystics and religious people have talked about God having this kind of love of free will this respect for free will and uh, so perhaps that's why and we really do need some explanation as to why it's not obvious to most people that this being exists certainly not obvious to me you can ask yourself whether it's obvious to you sometimes I believe it quite clearly sometimes I feel it quite clearly other times I feel it can't be possible um, so Let's, let's just say it's not obvious, I mean, and presumably if such a being exists and wanted to, they wanted to make it obvious, they could come right here, right now, into shot and show themselves and, and make it obvious to everyone, yeah, and make this the most popular video on YouTube. <laughs> so there's a reason why that's not happening. If God exists, if we assume that working assumption that God exists. But basically getting back to the question of creation, if you if you're balancing the scientific view and a more spiritual view that includes God as, as a creative force, what you're really buying up is what came first, the chicken or the egg. Yeah, and this is maybe a little bit blasphemous, but in this case the chicken is God, is a being, yeah, like a chicken is a being, and an egg is like the universe. It's like an object, it's not quite a being yet. Some of them aren't even fertilised, so stretching the analogy here a bit. But so it's a chicken and egg issue in that sense. And um, on the one hand, you've got the materialism of science that says material came before consciousness because we know that consciousness exists you know we are conscious though there are some philosophers and, and even scientists who try to deny that consciousness exists and um, well I'm not going to talk about that here but yeah so so basically their argument is material came first then gave rise to consciousness yeah i.e. beings like ourselves which can ask these kind of questions and then creationists saw you know that more di spiritual direction of saying well no god came first so consciousness came first and gave rise to material which then gave rise to human beings so again consciousness i suppose um so for me, it just seems more likely that consciousness might arise from nothing than material might arise from nothing. So if we imagine prior to the universe existing, there was nothing, not even time, not certainly not space or objects or anything like that, just nothing, just nothing, nothing, nothing for an infinite period of time, because there isn't, there is no time, so it's, it's almost doesn't make sense to talk about time. And to me, it seems more instinctively more plausible and more believable that consciousness might have arisen of itself, that 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 void might have become self-aware, and may have asked itself the very questions we ask ourselves: Why am I here? Who am I? 
Yeah. Rather than for material energy to arise from nothing. Now, you know, some creationists and some scientists might say that something has, has existed forever, that, that God has always existed as a consciousness or the, some scientists might say well maybe matter has always existed or energy has always existed so i don't i really know how to make sense of that idea to be honest something always existing um <laughs> imagine if i say to you time always exists always existed that almost makes nonsense of the idea of time. Time has a starting point, a middle point, end point. So, yeah, I just cannot even make sense of that idea. For me, something must have arisen. And whether it's matter or consciousness, I think of the two, consciousness seems more likely. Now, while well, I was talking about working assumptions, and this is the real killer blow for the scientific viewpoint, as opposed to a more spiritual consciousness type of viewpoint. And that is that science has this working assumption that most people in science and in, in society more generally don't even recognise anymore. But it, I assure you, it is a working assumption. And that assumption is that the physical world exists outside of consciousness, outside of the mind of the scientist doing the experiments. Now, you have to have that working assumption to do science, because otherwise you can't really get started. So you have to assume that the physical world exists independent of the mind, and then you can then do experiments on it and it will give you some uh, realistic feedback that's not influenced by you. Okay, so that's your mind. That's my mind. We can't influence, perhaps, in, in a lot of ways, we can't influence large parts of the universe with our mind. But what about God's mind? You know, what about a higher intelligence? What if, what if that mind is what gives rise to what we see as a physical world? And how do we see the physical world? How do we gain any evidence of the physical world? It's only through our minds. And a mind is not a physical thing, as far as we can tell. It's not something that can be measured. My experience of the world is not something that can be um, understood in any scientific basis. It's just, uh, it's my experience. It can't be weighed, it can't be measured, it can't be, um, you know, yeah, weighed and measured. It's 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 immaterial, as far as we can tell. It's the mental realm, the realm of consciousness. And to be honest, at the moment, science can't even begin to understand it. It doesn't even have the tools or the language to begin to understand it. Um, and let alone the well, even the brain, the scientists have really very little idea what's going on with the brain or with genetics or when it comes to the human body and the human consciousness, the human mind, we're really in the dark ages still, whatever they tell you. So, um, so yeah, so science has this working assumption that the physical world is real and is independent of at least the scientist's mind, yeah? Because without that, how can you experiment? How can you, and what's the point of experimenting? 
you can just create the world how you want. Well, some people think that's possible. But let's assume, but there was a very famous um, philosopher called Bishop Berkeley, and he he put forward this argument that basically we only ever have experience of the world in our mind. So, hey, why do we need to assume that there's anything outside of our minds? Maybe it's just all ideas. And he called it idealism. It's a slightly different meaning to idealism that we have today. So it's just meant ideas and that, that is the reality. And these ideas are given to us by God for him. He was a bishop, he was a theologian and a philosopher. Um, and to be honest, that's never been refuted. And it's hard to see how it could be, could, because any evidence that you could put forward to me <laughs> that would refute this, unless it was a logical argument that I could experience in my own mind, but if it was like scientific evidence, well, I can only access that evidence through my mind, and therefore I never have direct access to anything physical. So no evidence can give me any evidence of the physical. You'd have to come up with some kind of convincing argument that shows that it can't be in my mind, that the physical can't be in my mind, that it must be independent of my mind and of any mind. But as I say, that hasn't been done, possibly can't be done. And that might be because it isn't independent of our minds, of our, our human minds and of God's mind, this being I'm talking about. Now I'm expanding the definition of God here a little bit. Not only does he create the universe, but he maintains it moment by moment. She maintains it moment by moment by generating it in our minds. So, yeah, this could be true. And notice that there's no working assumption at work here. I don't have to have a working assumption because I know that consciousness exists. So I don't need the further assumption that that the physical world exists. We know that consciousness exists. We know that ideas and impressions and experiences exist in consciousness. So what? So maybe consciousness is bigger than we think it is, i.e. that is God, and God gives rise to these experiences for us. And that is how the universe is created moment to moment and from a rational basis this actually has less assumptions involved than, than the scientific ideas do which have this underlying assumption that our, our experience of the world is, is somehow veridic of a physical world is somehow true and yeah, that's a working assumption in science and it's absolutely necessary, but you need to recognise working assumptions. Unfortunately, most scientists don't recognise that that's a working assumption. They would just laugh at Berkeley and those kind of... And really that's all they can do because they could never come up with a rational way to deal with Berkeley and to deal with those kind of arguments. And perhaps the reason they can't it's because it really is like that. Yeah, it really is consciousness is all that exists in reality. Um, so, so that's why I would say, to be honest, the, the, the spiritual viewpoint has a slight edge over the, a slight rational edge over the, the scientific argument. But I'd also like to say that actually both can be true, that the physical world could be real and exist, independent of us and independent of God. 
and have its own genuine existence. And yet still God would, could be real um, and could have created the universe in the way that science says it was done. Um, and um, that would not contradict the existence of God. So overall, my, my conclusion that I'd like to leave you with, um, Akisha Stewart and others, and thank you for your question by the way, is uh, that basically there, there is a, there's a slightly stronger rational case, and I'm even laughing at this, but it's actually, as far as I could tell true, there's actually a slightly stronger rational case for Bishop Barclay's view of the universe and creation than there is for Richard Dawkins. Even though Richard Dawkins was shouting and scream that it's madness. So there you go. So thank you for watching the video and um, hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.